Hello my soccer universe. There were so many surprises and upsets during the midweek that I barely have any jerseys to wear for this one. And the one that I could wear, PSG, I've worn in the last three videos so I didn't want to wear PSG again. And for that reason, yes I was wearing today to work my wonderful France jersey so let's keep it with that because France at least had a league round. But yeah, let's go through what happened. A lot happened, it has to be said. <laughs> Um, we'll start with the Copa del Rey, which was a total surprise package. I mean, I've barely seen a cup round where all the outsiders won. It started on Tuesday, haven't seen a thing, Granada beating Valencia 2-1. Mirandes continues their run. After Sevilla, they also eliminate 4-2 Villarreal. That's already big. So, uh, yesterday, shooting is a Friday evening, I thought, well, um... It really looks like if the draw is right, Real Madrid Barcelona final. <laughs> I brought the kids to bed, I went down, I started the TV. It was the 52nd minute of Real Madrid, Real Sociedad. I saw a 1 0 lead for Real Sociedad. Udegaard with the help of Mondana. Um, pretty bad goal, I have to say, makes it 1 0. Then Isaac scores one, Isaac scores the second one. Uh, and it's 3-0 uh, Real Sociedad, and I thought, whoa, this is emphatic, especially weird, because Real Madrid was defensively so sound. Marcelo, though, puts one straight back, which is kind of, you know, I think for Marcelo, this is probably a good evening. He scored a goal, but uh, defensively, yeah, 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 he was typically Marcelo. What do you expect? But he puts one back, and that actually seemingly gave Real Madrid something. No, for one Real Sociedad. And at that point I thought, oh, the game is over. I went up uh, since it was the evening, took a quick shower, come down. Rodrigo makes it 2-4. Hmm, is there something in there? Yes, there was something in there. Um, um, in stoppage time, Nacho makes it 3-4. And at that point they had already a goal by Real Madrid taken down, also one by Real Sociedad through war, and then Ramos late in stoppage time even has the chance to make it 4-4. It was an amazing game to watch. I know, not for the coaches and more soccer purists who want to see good play, but it was an amazing game. I mean, seven goal thriller, cup round, that's what you want, what you want to have. Winner takes it also. Really great. And then was all set up for Athletic Club Barcelona, which I did not watch. I only saw highlights and I heard a little bit uh, from it. And from what I hear, Barcelona overplayed all right uh, and had numerous chances. I saw the chance by Griezmann and by Messi that should have decided the game. But on the other side, there was a goal ruled out by Iñaki Williams already and uh, they had all other chances. I mean, Iñaki Williams could have made it, but the game was very much headed nil-nil to overtime. And then Iñaki Williams, I think you cannot defend this corner, gets the head on it and makes it one in the 93rd. And Athletic Club moves on. Absolute madness in the Copa del Rey. And I think this is the first time since 2015-14 that Barcelona actually is eliminated ahead of the final. So pretty bad. And after the week that Barcelona had with Messi speaking out, uh, and all the unrest that is within the club. I'm not sure. I mean, from the outset, they say everything is cleared. I think there is a big stink, and I think the uh, earthquake is still to come. These were just the first, trim, first tremors uh, that are coming. So let's see how this will go. Uh, we have the semifinals, and now there are um, two legs. I really hate that. If Atletico Club against Granada and Real Sociedad Mirandes and then the return to which are played on February 12th and then on March 4th. So a long gap in between. This is between the Champions League uh, rounds and Europa League rounds. We have the return fixtures where Granada and Mirandes have uh, the home game. And it again continues which that the lower uh, teams have than the return fixture at home, which is nice. But to be honest, I have to say um, it should be played as one fixture uh, to keep the suspense going. But yeah, Copa del Rey this year, pretty exciting overall. Uh, also, the German Cup was pretty exciting. Uh, the only thing I have to say is it all looks all for Bayern again. 
Uh, it started with Frankfurt beating Leipzig 3-1. They were 2-0 up already when Leipzig put one back. And just when they were trying to get something going in stoppage time, Kostic makes it 3-1. That's what I saw from that one. I know that Lautern, Kaiserslautern had a 2-1 lead over Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf runs away as 5-2 winners. And then the late games on Tuesday. Uh, that was great cup action. <laughs> um, Werder, Bremen, Dortmund. 2-0 uh, at the half, second goal by Bremen, absolutely outstanding. Dortmund pulls one back early uh, in the second half. Holland came on, you know, first he was left off. Uh, I guess you want to save him for the Bundesliga, I don't know. So first of all, he comes on and suddenly Dortmund gets a little bit more energy again. Uh, they get the goal, I think, through Sancho, make it 2-1, but Bremen strikes right back and it's 3-1. Then Holland, I think around the 75th, scores a goal. I think it would have come in even without his touch. And everything is there to talk uh, is up for grabs again. And then the scene of the evening where Arena goes into the box, maybe is fouled by Moisander, the uh, Bremen captain. Um, and Moisander doesn't like that and just grabs him in the box and kind of pushes him down again, you know, and uh, there's a big uh, kerfuffle there. And then the referee, I think he was afraid of giving a penalty because when this happened, the ball was still in play. So if he gives a red card for Moisander, uh, this means foul and then it would have been a penalty. So he went for the Solomonic decision and gave both of them a yellow card. I found this a little bit weak, to be honest, because I think that it was, it may not have been a foul, but it was not um, a dive. That's my opinion on uh, that scene. But yeah, uh, Dortmund has chances, Holland misses one for a change, and it ends 3-2. At the same time, Hertha BSC had actually a 2-0 lead at the half at Schalke. That game was such a snooze fest uh, in Berlin in the Bundesliga and that actually came alive. Maybe the more aggressive colors, we had blue against red and black helped. Piontek scored one for a change, uh, so that was good and it looked all going well for Hertha. Schalke had chances, Schalke actually was more initiative, actually was well in the game but just leaked goals on the back. They come back and in short, I think in five or six minutes, managed to equal a 75th to the 80th or something like that. And then a key scene that I honestly didn't realize when I was watching is that, um, uh, and I don't know the other name, um, Hertha uh, player got racially abused and that actually seemingly set him off because the key scene was then he was running along the touchline, is fouled and while falling, falls into the uh, Schalke coach David Wagner, who clearly wants to help him up, but he's so incensed that he grabs this box with drinks and trashes it to the ground. And while gagging, and Wagner is just pulling him back. Um, he gets a second yellow card and is sent off, and then VAR intervenes. And suddenly, David Wagner is sent off for next to nothing. He tried to help the player get up. And I read today, I mean, everyone is expecting that uh, he will not be banned for the next cup game or whatever. At most, he will, he will get one, one game that that much is clear. But seriously, a red card for that? And then it says it was not for um, serious foul play or for violent action, but the hand was at the neck. Yeah, sure, the hand, hand is like he tries to help to balance the player to get him up again, to get, 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 get him going. Similarly, it was for the delay of game. It's not clear. Absolutely ridiculous decision. Shortly thereafter, Hertha with 10 men is having a corner and is caught on the counter. That I think Arit, uh, I think that, that was the name, finishes and it ends 3 2 for Schalke coming back and at least Schalke is moving on. Did not see anything, or didn't saw very little of the Wednesday games. Leverkusen Stuttgart 2 1. The two goals by Leverkusen were all glaring goalkeeping mistakes. They had a good goal, goal, goalkeeper, but this game would have probably ended in favor of Stuttgart. Union Berlin uh, beat Fell, so they're in the quarterfinals for the first time since uh, forever. Then Saarbrücken wins over Karlsruhe. Uh, 
on penalties that used to be a match up that could be higher, but yeah. And Bayern Munich Hoffenheim was 4 1 late, and then Hoffenheim pulls two back, it's similar to the Real Madrid situation, but this time Bayern was the one in the, in the lead and gets over. And if I look at who's left Frankfurt, Dusseldorf, Bremen, Schalke, Leverkusen, Union, Saarbrücken, and Bayern, it seems like this is made for another title for Bayern. Now to some league games. We had in Serie A Lazio Hellas Verona. First of all, the Lazio fans did it again. Wonderful Tifo with handies, just with lights, making really, really, really nice eagle in there. I totally floored by that one. The game itself was not good. Uh, Lazio, I mean, it was it was interesting, but it was not exciting. I think Lazio took a while, but I think late had good chances, hit, I think, the post twice, but in the second half, I had the feeling whenever I watched, it was all Verona. Only late in the, in the game, Lazio could get themselves back in. I think overall, maybe Lazio had the slight edge, but overall, Verona put in really um, fighting spirits and a good performance and probably deserved the draw, which means that Lazio is not, go, not going past Inter, they're staying behind Inter, and also Verona is not making up any ground, but they are at least now in touch uh, with the 6 to 8 placed teams. And then we had France to close it all out. So highlights of two games, not PSG, and yes, I didn't really touch, I knew that there was some scandals happening <laughs> at PSG, but at the round of video just wasn't really yet too aware aware of that. First of all, the Mbappé situation where he was not happy with again being subbed off and Tuchel trying to console him or you know, talk to him and it was not a pretty pretty scene. And then of course Neymar uh, trying to make a trick being told by the referee to not do it because he's gonna get uh, tackled and probably even uh, warned and then he basically uh, is confronting the referee and tells me you you don't want ball, want ball to play football. I think this was from the referee really really good. I'm not a fan of Neymar's, but here I gotta take Neymar's side to be honest. Yes, he doesn't need me need to do any showboating, but you know it's Neymar. So yeah, um, Tuesday there was also Neymar's birthday party, all white suits, and suddenly Neymar is injured. How convenient! And yeah. Not PSG. Uh, PSG, both games that I've been talking about, wearing the new fourth jerseys, which look all right, you know, with the French flag on a black jersey. I just don't see the reason for them other than this here. Uh, Mbappé with a wonderful assist to Di Maria, and Icardi wants to jump out to not be outside, and he gets hit and it deflects into the net, and it's actually Icardi's goal in the end. Um, then Kera in the second half after a header makes it 2-0, not actually quickly to pull, late, a few minutes later pulls one back, they had a glorious chance to equalize and you know, PSG had more of the game but um, could have maybe let but two goals at the half, but there was also a huge chance for um, Nantes there. Nantes cannot find the equalizer, although it was there. Um, and it's 2-1 for PSG. We had also Monaco beating Angers 1-0 and Lille Rennes 1-0, also a big uh, result with Strasbourg beating Toulouse, so Toulouse loses again. Brest Bordeaux 1-1, Montpellier 1-1, uh, Metz 1-1, Nîmes Dijon 2-0, Reims Nissen 1-1, uh, lots of draws in there. Lyon, Amiens and goalless and then Saint-Étienne Marseille. Not much to talk about that game except the goal by Payet, where he's on the side, he tries to get past the defender, fakes left, fakes the right, and then more or less from the touchline, takes a shot and profits that the goalkeeper was fooled by his previous move and moves out and he puts it in between the post and the goalkeeper. 1-0, not much happening thereafter. Amra, uh, I think Amrabat had a, a good chance for saint Saint-Étienne, and then um, in the stoppage time, Marseille puts on the icing on the cake and makes it 2-0. And yes, that means in the table we have Marseille and PSG on top, both of them winning. Rennes stays in third, Lille uh, moves now uh, moves a little bit uh, closer. You know, it's nothing really changed, but they are at least in fourth spot. Montpellier is up there, Lyon is up there. It is so hard. I, I keep saying it in uh, France because, you know, uh, up until Metz in 16th is 27 points, but it's Dijon at 24 gets a little bit more in danger because Nîmes 
uh, moved out with a win is only three points and then Amiens and Toulouse down there. Toulouse probably is going down. Amiens, Nîmes, maybe Dijon. Let's see how it will develop. So that was the midweek. Let me know what you watched and how you saw the games that I was talking about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.